practice. So our first game is Stein versus Tall, and he beat Tall. Well, he has a positive record and plus record against Tall. So we have a knight orf opening. All right, we got e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4 takes, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3. So your standard, right? Standard open Sicilian, then a6, which is the which opening? That's the one that Lynn was talking about, right? The night orphan. Yeah, the night orphan. Yeah. Now, now yeah. actually, interestingly, we were talking about different responses, bishop e3, bishop e2. So here we have our bishop g5, which is very aggressive. So now we'll see how to handle that or how not to handle it, maybe. But knight bd7, I think a lot of times you go e6 and so forth. I'm not a specialist in it, but knight bd7, guarding it. And then just, so he just plays, it just shows you how you can play with white really actively, right? Just yeah. active pieces, queen a5. Queen D2. And if you look at uh, Emery Tate games, how he would, super aggressive attacker, how he would crush the Sicilian. Also, he wouldn't do anything, you know, too fancy with the center pawn. Just get the pieces out quickly. So we'll have a lot of players handle it. Castle Queen side. So he's even allowing B5. It's like, you can play B5, but, well, it's, it's cool. Check this out. Then he just, okay, it's just centralization. So oh. very common sense. Very common sense. Especially since Black, oh, Richard? Oh, no. I was saying wow because of the bishop, uh, B3. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, right? so I was trying to corp add to my repertoire because, you know, uh, that almost means he has to play. It's just, uh, it, it just looks very defensive, but, you know, that that's something I need per my repertoire. Be, be more comfortable with Bishop B3 in this, in this circumstance. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's cutthroat in a way because you're allowing them to get B5 in with tempo. Well, either way, you're yeah. probably going to spend two moves on bishop b3. You just really want bishop b3, and you don't really want to play a4 to stop it because you're castling queen side. So it's like, you know what? I'm going to let you do that, but you're comfortable enough in your own attack. Uh, hey, goodness, how's it going? Long time. You're muted. Goodness, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, could you be that? How's it going? I'm good. How you doing? Cool, cool, good. Um, so yeah, we just started, we just got into uh just to go back a couple moves. Yeah, we're just getting in at nine orf, right? Okay. So it's a G5 line, okay. And then yeah, he it's bold though, right, Richard, as you're saying, you know, just allowing this and uh you have to be confident in your position, but really it's rapid development. How else are you gonna mobilize your bishop? There's bishop b2, which is very modest. So you want to attack, you you look at f7, and obviously once he goes e6. And this is common, like Fisher, it's like in the spirit of the fisher Sozen line, which will probably be around mm -hmm. the time in the 60s when he played a lot, right? And he would go F4, F5. And the idea is to chip at E6. And well, just like the other line we looked at where Black goes E5 voluntarily, you kind of force Black to go E5. Uh, after F4, F5, you chip at it with a lot of pieces, right? Uh, two, two pieces and a pawn. So they play E5, now you get an access to D5. They take your knight takes, right? So you're good there. The bishop opens. So yeah, you're trying to tear open the diagonal and you just want to, you, you know, you have a huge lead in development, which is typical of the Sicilian, open Sicilian. White only spends two pawn moves. Black is spending a bunch of pawn moves. So naturally white has a lead in development. Now they have to have the active piece play to exploit it. So he's taking, he's like, okay, let's create uh, double pawns and let's attack them. Well, he's not really getting forked though. Definitely not a real fork. I mean, it's a pseudo, it's pseudo fork kind of, it doesn't uh, do anything because after uh, e5, of uh, course, uh, of course, what, what's the line yeah. gonna be? He's gonna lose immediately. Uh, what yeah. would happen all if he had played e5? You mean, uh, it's queen takes and oh, yeah, queen uh, takes, and, takes, yeah, and queen yeah. takes, uh, queen takes yeah, and also well, you're threatening f7, but I guess you'd have to take b3 with check, but yeah, that'd be bad. Yeah, no need to give this up for free. It weakens the diagonal, it weakens the d5. Yeah, it's too much. It weakens d5. All the white squares get weak d5, f5. So yeah, he just plays, just guards it. No need for that. And he yeah. goes after that. Now he's coming after it looks like the the e pawn slash diagonal. But he figures it's anticipating, right? Because he figures, hey, you're going to castle queen side. I have some tactical ideas on the diagonal too. So wherever yeah. he's oh, good. Yes. on g8, he good gets this. him here. E8, he looks at him here. If he comes in, c8, he has tactical ideas, pin and everything. What's that? Oh, uh, I see goodness join. Goodness, he's a uh, forward. University tournament player. We'll see this join. Hey. Hello. Hello. What's that, Richard? You're right. Talking uh, goodness. No, he's not before. He's a Howard U tournament player. So, hello. Uh, good to see you. Hey. Good to see you. Yeah. So, we got Queen G4. Oh, so, you guys know each other? Um, we've met before. But... Cool. Yeah. Castles. 
So then he goes, but now it's oh, interesting. Wow. You'll see Tall doing oh, the tackle. Good. Again, I'm thinking of Emery Tate. I'm thinking of Tall, where he just hangs the knight on D5 or something. Usually you'll see that when the rook, when the king's on E8. Very common idea against the knight orf when the pawn's on E6. Uh, obviously, the pawn's on E5. You also want to go knight D5. But yeah, you sack the knight. Well, although he's not sacking the knight because of the pin, see? In some lines, he might, but no, not really, because he's going to take E7, if anything, if he wants to. But yeah, the knight's just uh, not really hanging mechanically right it's just not there's the pin all right so there's your b4 you know is it ready to go why not takes b7 we check and here we come again so it's just nice you know if you look at the flow of the game then we'll go back and look at the flow but everything's uh, uh mobilizing right mobilize castle bring out the rook connect the rooks bishop just goes back sure it has to rook comes in the middle bishop takes queen comes out Queen attacks there. Bishop comes forward, takes. Knight comes forward. Pawn takes. Right. So everything is forward. So now, uh, well, that's a, that's a sort of a pure piece sack. It looks like, but it's actually it's all timed out because when he takes, okay, you have a tempo on the bishop. Can you guys figure out what's going on? Why it's okay? Well, first of all, we have a ton of piece play. Again, usually the king would be on e8 to justify this. It's like, of course, king's on e8. Of course, I want to tear up an e file. Now he's not even like he's not even getting to the black king right now. The king is. You know, ostensibly uh -huh. fine. Although there's another concept that White has. First of all, he gains a tempo. You can't really block. Yeah. You want to block, you just lose the knight. So he gains a tempo on this terrible bishop. Queen's still active. Everyone's active, right? Black has, well, Black has A2 to take. Actually, you got to be careful about A2 in some cases. But E7 and Tangy would check. So we have a lot of dynamics going on. Well, what's going to happen next? He goes here. Now what Now what can White do? Is there outpost? Queen takes, uh, no, no. Oh, no. Uh, Where's the outpost? No. I mean, you know, C6, I don't know, C6. Yeah, C6, so you have that additional yeah. idea coming into C6, right? So it's all flowing, right? Forward, tempo on the bishop, tempo on the queen. Now, she can take A2, but that's fine. It's actually a, it's actually like a triple fork, right? Because if she, I think she takes A2, right? But when she takes A2, of course, you can do what? Immediately, before you take anything. I mean, before you take the bishop or something. Take on B4. Just take with check on before. Why not? Yeah. And then we take e7. We don't even trade rooks. And so we have our piece back, and we're just we're just attacking. I, yeah, I mean, you just have to move to d2 if he checks you, if she comes here. So what do we have? Uh, we're up some pawns, right? We're up a pawn, messed up structure, exposed king. Yeah, I mean, again, they can make your king move, but you just have to be willing, kind of like with the idea of bringing your bishop to b3. It's like, yeah, they can attack me for a minute. I can deal with it. But you have to be confident in your own attack. So again, th this is not the end of it, but again, we're seeing the flow of it, right? Everything is a tempo move, a pure initiative, right? Attack, attack, with check, take. Okay, then we have a reach. Okay, we can't do it every move of the game, right? <laughs> but we've actually secured a, We've secured an extra pawn. Hey, we have. We're winning pawn wise, right? Our king is actually probably a little safer too. Where um, we want the end game, right? We're up. Uh, we're up a C pawn. And look at their king side is shattered. We're squeezing them with the D pawn. So what I mean, trading queens looks good, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty cool how he transitions into winning into winning endgames. Look at this. Okay, tempo again. So basically, whenever you're up material, when you threaten to trade, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a threat. It's kind of a, a tempo, right? Because they don't want to trade in this case. So it's almost as if like you move a bishop to attack the queen, right? Okay, attack the rook. That looks interesting. So now, it gets, now this is kind of fun. Watch how they tango here. You can't take it, obviously, if it's pinned, right? Yeah. And then I say, so go here, check. Yeah. They don't want to, it looks pretty dangerous. <laughs> they can't go back because there's a rook check. So they go uh, here. Now they're all tied up. Then look at that calm move. It's kind of like almost a Zoog Zwang scenario. He's like, I'm just going to move my king. Oh, no. Well, there is a very specific reason, too, because black has something. You see what I kind of pointed to? It. What does black have right here? Which is uh, none too pleasant. Yeah, he has a fork, right? And yeah. I fork. You guys see that? I'll see the fork. That black. Yeah, light. Yeah. That would be a nasty counter, like after this beautiful play, just to fall for night. So obviously, yeah. I'm not falling for that. But nice thing, yeah. it's also kind of is almost like, a, like it has no good moves, really. So he hangs his B pawn. Well, he's skewering the queen and knight. It's kind of tricky, right? 
knight takes. Well, yeah, yeah, if the queen moves away, we just win the knight. So you're forcing them to take, and they can't take with the rook, which is fine. So the knight takes. Now the question is, see, this is like the this is that combo where he's where I think he's gonna is gonna yield that um the win that we looked at in the puzzle. It's pretty deep, right? But right now, yeah, we're still up our pawn. We haven't we have an out, but I mean, so just on the face of it, it looks like we're pretty much winning all else being equal. Now we're about to win the knight, so he has to take. Okay, we actually gave them a pawn back. Okay, can you guys calculate what's happening after rook takes queen? If we take the queen. Is that working yet? Rook takes. Um, is it discovered check? There's a discovered check. Um, yeah. Is there? Does it work? Is there? Yeah, they take with uh, check. And takes. Take back with check. You have to move your king. And it just takes. And they, takes. You, had, you had to give up your rook, right? So you're not in exchange, aren't you? Right, you guys see that? So if you mm -hmm. take, well, he's going to come up with some, same with another game. He has very interesting queen trades. But yeah, if you take, so you're trading queens indirectly because you take, they take back, then they're, they're discovering, discovery. Oh, wait, well, actually, it's more complicated than that because you wouldn't hang your, you, you would take this and they would take back. And so you'd have to determine whether this is good. Now your D pawn's hanging. It's a little unclear. Equal pawns. Yeah, their pawns are kind of ugly, but it's not decisive yet. So he, want, he wants more. So he just moves the king back to c1. And now the queen's still hanging, right? So first he goes to b1. Then he comes back to c1. So he's kind of cutthroat. He's like enabling this to this capture to happen. Well, by the way, he was threatening knight c3 now because of the pin. No, 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 wait, wait. No, 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 never. It's super tactical. Hold on. Knight c3, queen, knight c3 check. Yeah. Um, they would, um, no, I think so. I think so. Like, let's say white does something random. Oh, actually, that would be helping. Okay, something random down here. I think knight c3 fork. Yeah, they would get the exchange. There's still stuff, other stuff going on. It's super messy. Easy to miss stuff there. Um, anyway, no, it's not ready yet. So he lets that happen. He just moves his king. Says, okay, your queen's still hanging. And he's like, all right, let's trade queens. What's going on here? So what happens if the queen takes the queen? It's more fully black. White has fully mobilized. Everything is mobilized. Black uh, kind of tangled up, right? What's going to happen with queen takes queen? Actually, that no, that's where we're getting to our puzzle situation. The queen takes queen. Knight takes queen. And then the rook comes over and check him. Then they can check. And what's going on with the knight on b2? Remember, he's like, he let him take on b2. Looked kind of ugly. Looked dangerous. But why is it okay that the knight's on b2? And you guys remember from the puzzle that, Lynn, you mentioned earlier, that puzzle I gave you for this game, what happens there uh, with the knight in the, in the, at the end of the line? Uh, he goes to a5. I mean, uh, the black knight. What happens to the black knight? Oh, the black knight. Um, what's that? Just trapped. He's trapped. You just have yeah, to. Trap. So yeah, if he takes now, they move the king. If they take, yeah, knight just takes, and then you're gonna, I guess, just really you can do whatever you want. You can. You're even threatening to go back knight b three. Um, they can't really do anything, right? You can just go back to b three, and the knight's trapped. Right. Or rook b3 probably doesn't matter much as long as you know as long as you deal with the rook on the b file to so get it so they go here okay we, we're forcing the trade oh no not yet not yet so like i like this tango right see how they come here takes, comes back comes over this way to the left down back and now he finally takes she finally takes it he takes back and the same conundrum with the knight that's about to be trapped well it is trapped we just need to attack it again now, this is where he's like, okay, I'm going to lose it anyway, desperado. So what's going on? Uh, what happens if the rook takes the rook? Let's find the cleanest win. I mean, it's very tempting to take the rook and be like, okay, I'm up in exchange. You might actually have two ways to win this pretty cleanly. But yeah. If, and Lynn, you said it, though. Well, you guys can think about it. Goodness just came in. Maybe take 30 seconds just to look at it, and we'll talk about it.
Okay, you guys seeing anything? I know Lynn knows it. Oh, we mentioned it. Yeah, Lynn, uh, Lynn mentioned it earlier. You guys recall? Uh, I'm thinking just 985. Uh-huh, 985, you save your night. And again, like, he can give you the exchange, but he's still losing the night. So he's actually down a rook. Yeah. And if he doesn't, well, then you're just going to take the rook and you're still going to get the night. Well, actually, no, if he doesn't take it and you take the rook, then you're going to be up uh, a rook and a knight. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you are because the knight, the knight on a five covers C4. I think you get the whole knight as well. It doesn't matter. You're up a rook at least. And you probably get the knight too. So, yeah, yeah, he plays this move, then he resigns. Now, as for this move, it's probably about the same, but it just looks like a little more complicated. Because now you have, yeah. but no, no, no. He has this move. He has that move. The king cut. The king attacks d4. King c5 attacks d4, and it gives his, it gives it. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe you get it eventually, but I'm not going to mess with that. Let's just do this move that goodness said and Lynn said. And yeah, because if he just took the rook, that's a lot more work that you have to figure out. Yeah, it's very forcing because he he's just hanging the rook now. Because you can't go to c6, the knight the knight re retreats uh, with a check, cover c6. The rook would take, take back. Uh, we make okay, king. Uh, the rook tries to create an escape on c4, and then oh, actually, we still got to figure that out. Oh, duh, <laughs> sorry. No, they have no time. They have no time. All right, yeah, so it's game over. They're just down a rook. Okay, come here. Right yeah. Where and we just take it. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Good game. Yeah. So uh, again, now just to flip through it. So I call it kind of skim reading games, kind of skim reading. You know, you, you, when you skim read games or skim flip through games, you, you don't necessarily have to pick up everything. It's kind of like if you're going to read, like if you're in college or something and, you know, which goodness is right. And so you're, you're reading through something, you know, you, you just don't have time to read in depth on everything. Maybe like a certain essay, you have to read more into one paragraph or whatever, one passage. But yeah, you just kind of just kind of get a sense. And if you feel like it, yeah, you can definitely focus on things. But just looking at, okay, he's mobilizing. Is and Richard, you picked up the concept of allowing them to go B5. Like that's a thing, right? It looks bad in a way, but you can allow that to lose the tempo. Rapid mobilization, double the pawns, allow them to fake 4Q. Uh, and then you have this nice little idea of Queen G4. So you're going to crash through on E6. And then we we remember the concept. So you did, now you have to figure out whether it works for you. But if you didn't know the concept. Even if the king, again, it might make more sense if the king's on e8 to do knight d5 or bishop d5. But now you know, you, well, we have the we have a pin. But even so, uh, even after he gets off the pin, we can still do the move. So it, again, you have to figure it out in your game. But at least you know it's available. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just kind of have to tweak it when it or see kind of get the right size, right, wheel. But you know what the wheel is, right, where it, where it can go. And then I'm like, yeah, this is just smooth. You know, if you get a fork, it's a triple fork. So, hey, the pawn matters because you take with check. You don't worry about it. Yeah, again, ideas like you allow queen a1 check sometimes. Get your piece back. You're up pawn. Try to do those queen. And then this is just pure tactics. Like you got to have really good tactical awareness to see that you should go uh, king b1, to see that you should go, that you can allow this, this cold-blooded kind of move where you allow a move like knight takes b2 and you just walk your king back. Like, okay, well, yeah, you lost the pawn. There's no follow-up, obviously. And then we just dance. I like this dance. It's kind of cool, right? He goes back, you come over, you shuffle around, and then you win. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Good one. Just hyperactive piece play, right? That's what yeah. he Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is says his best games. And I think some of these are mentioned um, in, well, if you go to, uh, if you just go on chessgames.com, it's very, I mean, it's one of the best resources, really quick. Like, it's like a more thorough version of Wikipedia. It's like Wikipedia with chess games on it, right? But you have all the, you have the, this would be like the Wikipedia part, the entry, but then you have all those games that they, at least what they have, which is pretty, uh, pretty extensive. Oh, interesting. Because he's from Ukraine. You have the Ukrainian championship in 62. I wonder if he won that one. Because I know he'd won the USSR as well. Then you have the 10 games. So you can't go wrong looking through these. Which one did we just look at? We uh, No, it actually wasn't even this game. It was a different tall win. We have that game, which is pretty cool. Um, but why don't we look at this is a great game. Of course, they chose this one first because it's an amazing game. The one with the King's Indian. As we've seen, we talked about the King's Indian. Uh, yeah, we talked about that, Nikki, right? Playing with black. Yes. Yeah, not against the F3 stuff, the same ish, but it's against an aggressive version, I think. Um, Master of <laughs> Stein, Master of, uh, of, of Risk Strategy. I, oh, there's a book on that. So they basically just pull the games from that. 
Um, but let's see. I was curious how he, how he did in this championship. Let's see. He won with 13. And, oh, he beat Goofell. Interesting. So I guess Goofell's. So I, the ones I've heard of, I've heard of a few of these. But the most famous would be uh, those two, the ones that were at the top. Uh, yep. Pretty cool. So let's go back to the game. Uh, Kings Indian. Insane in the Ukraine. You guys know the song? Yeah. I don't know that it may be some chess player will turn that into well nowadays with AI, you can probably easily just turn insane in the membrane into insane in the Ukraine and be like, okay, modify the words to uh, speak about uh, the counteroffensive or something like that. So, all right, so we have d4, and f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. Now, this is where black would choose whether to do King's Indian or, or Grunfeld. If you want a Grunfeld, you have to go d5 right now. Because otherwise, yeah, obviously you can't do it here because you just drop the D pawn and white gets a massive cluster after C takes D5 in the center. So yeah, you, so Fisher would do both. You know, often he he pioneered, I think, a lot of uh, ideas in the Grunfeld or further to understanding. And now interestingly, black allows E5 because they're going to punch back hard. I think you even allow it. You just go to E8, but you punch back with D. It's like an Alakine's defense. You just punch back right away. So he allows in this line. Now he's ready to just take and fragment white's pawns. So we have a very typical uh, classical version, or it's called the Petrosian variation, I guess. And maybe H, I don't know that well. I mean, this is all very normal, right? This is classic stuff. But then you have H6. Maybe that's called the Petrosian variation. I don't know. Do you guys know this one? Because usually you'll see games like, I think Fisher's done C5 here that we've looked at. 98, the night back F5. You're ready for F5 because white voluntarily just bypassed. So you close the position. You want F5, pawn chain aiming to the right king side but i think fisher maybe in this position or something very similar has played c5 to shut down the c because you know what is okay just to review we've seen king's india many times but just to make sure you guys got it down what is white's main play and black's main play in this in this position or something similar based on the structure Well, white is, I'm mean, black is definitely doing a king side attack. Yeah. And what does white do? F5 is launching with F5 often. Well, in this game, in this game, he's not subtle about it, but it's very flexible in a way, the way he plays. But yeah, he goes straight for F5, F4. But it's cool because he does other things than just what's expected of your, you know, classic attack, you know, then this kind of stuff, right? And then pieces come over. Um, but that's, yeah, he mixes it up, which is cool in this game. Uh, what else? What does white do? White always is going after d6 or something, or like a queen, like a some kind of c5 stuff. Yeah, then yeah, with then he has the c5 pressure and d6. Yeah. Maybe knight goes to b5, and maybe he tries to reach c7 with a rook to get a counterplay, or he tries to win the pawn, and then hopefully black can ignore them. You'll see in this game they go rook f7, keeps an eye on the seventh ring too. And again, the Fisher game where he plays c5, it's directed against c5. So first he does that, then he moves the knight and plays f5, f4, and crushes it in Korchnoi. Um, and the idea is that remember we, we looked at the game. Remember, guys, the one where they take on Passant and Fisher gets the cluster of pawns. That was when he beat. Um, no, uh, oh, that was I think that was that may have been from the Fisher Spassky match, or it may have been one of it. Uh, no, no, it was against Timonov, his run up to the champ. Remember that one where he wins like six zero against Timonov. He did that. Okay, so h6, castles, not h7. So same concept as to prepare a five. But it's a little different because this you have additional ideas like knight g5. What's that? It's a nice little maneuver. Yeah. Well, the famous Fisher maneuver is knight, knight h8. You guys remember? You guys have seen that one? Yeah. Knight h8, knight g6 to h8, f7, g5, which is actually the Korchnoi game. I think. Okay. Knight h7, knight e1. Now, white usually actually likes to go knight d3 to prepare c5 and allows it to play f3 to secure his center. So he's ready for f5, f4. But white's going to get attacked. They just hope it works out for them and that they can survive and win on the queen side. There's your b5, b4, c5 idea. And that's the bayonet attack line, the b4. Rook f7, c5, bayonet concept. Okay, and then he goes for his pawn break. Naturally, right? Pawn chain aims here. End of the pawn chain wants to break, just like black ones. First break was f5. He bypassed. Now the natural break is g5, g4, right? Knight goes to f6. And remember, the, this knight can always come to uh, g5 in, in some cases. It could even reroute f8 to g6. 
or it could just hang out. It hangs out there for a while in the game. Now, I'm not sure if this was a good move or not. Uh, C5. Well, actually, let's flip it now. So we'll see how he's how he's going to crush him. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if this uh, C6 was a good move. Oh wait, let's move this up a little bit. Why do you think maybe? Well, what do you think you can do about this? C6. First of all, you know, white wants play. Like Nikki said, you kind of want to be able to take and put pressure on C7 and D, like C7 invasions, like knight B5, C7, rook C1, right? Maybe bishop A3 or something. A lot of times white likes bishop E3 to F2, but kind of too late for that. You see that affects white's position a lot. But yeah, this might be a little uh, bit of an inaccuracy. So what do you think white black should do about C6? Probably B6. So one move is just to close it. Well, if you close it, that's 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 viable. Because then it's like, well, what does white do? Can white force open? If white can't force open lines, then black has a free hand. So it's either close it or take it. If you close it, they go A4. Well, what if they go A4? A oh, you, you can go A6 and shut it down, right, goodness? Yeah. A4. You might get tied down, though. You might get tied down. What were you thinking? The A4, A6. Um, yeah. yeah, this is fine. I think you pretty much have a free hand over here. It should benefit you. you yeah. should, just like the C5 idea to shut them down. Uh, A5, B5. Uh, uh, I think that's probably fine. Here's the problem, though. What if he doesn't do anything and like just keeps pressure on A6? What were you saying? No, no I'm, I'm listening to you. Um... Oh, there might also be like ideas where white tries to sack on b5. Yeah, you that's know? kind of what I'm looking at. Yeah, like let's say they go there and they're going to be able to sack most likely and then get the pass pawn. So it's like, it's a little complicated as you can see. It is, it seems very natural to do it. It's probably not a bad move. But the other thing, like I said, is that at the very least, like like uh, if they just leave it there, let's say they go like queen, I don't know, bishop b3, queen e2 or something and put pressure here, then, then you have to stay there with your rook and bishop which you don't want to have to do, right? If you go a5, they just take it, I guess. Okay. So yeah, they, yeah, interestingly, you, yeah, you don't even need, so he made the right move probably, but it's, it's probably possible in certain lines, but he takes, and then he just, so, it, and then he just goes here. Uh, yeah, you, you have to have, a, either way, there's going to be a thorn on c6, you're just going to do it. But again, keep in mind that it closes the c file because that's the main counterplay. So suddenly he's like, okay, great. I have this really nice pawn chain. You're probably not going to get, I mean, I already have rook covering c7 and queen. So I'm pretty much fine there. If you come with the knight, I'll just kick it if I want. And now he goes bishop e6 and takes the center. He can mobilize it now. A lot of times the bishop doesn't come out till later, sacks on h3 or something. But yeah, this is fine. So what do you guys think about this position? So I just had a quick question. So huh? when, when he was back to, when he when he moved it in the first place and before he took, yeah, like here, like ignoring it would be really bad because then you just lose a tempo and you're like kind of putting your bishop where he doesn't want to be, I'm assuming. Right, right. So effectively, what would that be the equivalent of? Um, yeah, that would be like, I don't know. What would that be like? That would be kind of like, yeah, it would be like if black goes B6 and takes and like a rook takes back or something. It's like, that's that's clearly not what you do. Maybe if you play b6 takes and takes back with the a pawn, but now you're just splitting your pawns. Yeah, so if they go like g5, ignore them. Yeah, and now the, the bishop has to leave the diagonal. Okay. I mean, it's, maybe it's playable, but it's like if you're going to, there's no point. Yeah, and if you're going to have one of the pawns traded, you can see it benefits him to uh, yeah. trade. To, to Well, he takes, he's trading a b pawn for, he's punching a hole on d5. b pawn for d pawn is the trade, right? When all is said and done, we remove these two pawns. And then, so in other, so rather than having the bishop go to d7 or b7, it gets to go to e6. Yeah, so you can see all the advantages. Mm -hmm. And black's pieces are looking pretty good. Here's another thing. Well, we're going to get to mobilize more pieces. The bishop on g7, check this out. So b5. And you can see white's play is very slow. a4, a5. I mean, I don't know if he even gets anything out of a4, a5, b6. I'm not sure if that yields anything. So it'll take him a long time, too. And obviously, black's going g5, g4 whenever he wants. Okay, why do you think he did this move? Very cool. It's very cool how he handles the King's Indian. But again, it's based on the unique circumstances with C6, the way it was played. It's very flexible opening. So what do you think is his concept with... Uh, what move was it again? I'm sorry, I missed the move. 
Uh, Bishop F8. Oh. I mean, it, move, it, it allows the rook to go laterally, right? Yeah. What else? Is, oh my goodness, is he gonna like, mm, I don't know about that, but some kind of like, I'm thinking this, like D5, that looks a little. Well, don't doubt it. I mean, don't doubt it too much. If you think there's something to it, try explore it. I mean, maybe not immediately, but. Yeah, just say. What was like, his next move? He plays here. Oh. So now, what do you think about now? Oh, now I play D5, I think. Yeah, it gets it. To, I mean, they could win your, they're gonna win your D pawn, quote, mm -hmm. win. Yeah, you know, they're going to be up the pawn, but then your bishop comes out. And like I remember, I talked about the bishop not going to f2. Mm -hmm. So then they're, they're abandoning the diagonal. And I mean, your bishop's a lot happier on c5 than on g7, right? So you guys like, you guys like that move? What else do you have? Otherwise, he's going to just squeeze you. And see, this is the justification. He knew the whole time. Otherwise, maybe we would do goodness's move if he didn't have it, right? But he knows that there's no time to get knight b4 to d5. And without, well, the bishop gets out first before he clogs it up, blockades the d-pawn. Because I white's doing probably all right there. I mean, we could just ignore his knight on g5 and still go g5, g4, as is kind of mandated in this position. But now we could do it with the inclusion of the bishop. We just ignore the knight. We come in. Pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now we have all sorts of mating patterns, right? Because the king, well, first of all, the king can't flee. He likes to flee sometimes. If he's going to be in trouble, he never gets to flee now, pretty much. Or he's going to need three moves to go bishop d2 to e1 to f2, challenge the bishop, then, then go back to g1 and try to flee. <laughs> so, it, But the point is we're going to have the initiative, so they don't, they don't get to do those things. That's why we often get the initiative. So they, they, they can't take, they don't get free moves like that, right? They, they would like to, but they don't get to, right? Does that make sense how, we have, how we're building this now? And you can see the power of rook f7 too. It allows the lateral, but but he is he always has c7 covered. Yeah, that c7 pawn. I'd yeah, it's like you don't have to worry way. about it. It's what? I'd be nervous about the c7 pawn otherwise. Yeah, I mean, like let's say the thing about the king's Indian is what white's white's um argument is basically okay, you try to attack me. Maybe I have to make some concession, right? But I I just need to hold on and then I'm gonna smash through like taking c7 or getting a pass pawn over here somewhere and so then i win the end game or even the middle game just get a pass pawn and win your piece but ideally white just wants a better end game right it's like an english too kind of like an english where white you know white has to withstand like f5 f4 or h5 h4 whatever g5 g4 some pawn storm you know they have to withstand that but then they have a ton of queen side player or or maybe white what often happens though is the king side attacker overextends himself we saw that in the queen side attack line right Go for the queen, the queen side attack lecture. I put a video up. I got to add the videos recently. But yeah, we see that. So it's that concept. It's a, it's a type of queen side attack. And um, yeah, they have central counterplay and they have queen side play. They just need to survive. But obviously now it's harder to survive because we all all sorts of tricky stuff on the H file and G3 square, right? Get a knight on G3, stuff like that, right? So you've seen those patterns before, I imagine, right? If we get a pawn on G3, we saw a Nakamura game once, I think, mm -hmm. where he stacks, pawn takes. You have h5, h4. I mean, you have so many ideas. With g5, g4, g3, that's what Nakamura does. He goes g5, he goes g5, h5, g4, g3, takes, takes. So he sacks the, he basically sacks the f and g pawn for the h pawn, but then he's opening up all the dark squares. There's also a famous tall game similar to that. So now h5. And yeah, we have, but, but now we are the ones that also have the central play for bishop c5. So he's flexible. He's, but really, what's he doing? Same concept. He's looking for peace activity. That's what he always does, right? Okay, so he sacks immediately. What's the follow through after this? Looks like he's just gonna, it looks like it's not gonna work. But what does Black do next to escalate this? Queen g5. Yeah, so now he's threatening what? Queen h5 mates. An immediate mate. mate. So wow. have to be forced. It seems like there's nothing yet. Okay, now no. how do you escalate? Um. Uh, you pushed the H pawn. Bingo. Yeah, you got it, Lynn. Nice. So we just crack at it. And now we're threatening to take the H pawn. And we can we can use the rook and the queen on the H file. So we're going to have just a barrage on the H file. They're not stopping us there. Well, we combine the H file with the diagonal. They're getting checkmated, right? Mating attack. 
Plus, we have knight g5 ideas. We spring with the knight if the queen moves. We can also, if we take with the smash with these pawns. So it's, it seems like it's, it's winning, right? But they still have some resistance, so we still have to finish them off. So this is just totally messy. Okay, well, now they're stopping. Well, they don't get mated on the h file at the moment. But now we're still threatening to mate them with queen check, king up, queen h3 mate, because we have crisscross, right? So queen h5 or something, queen, queen h5, rage six, king g2, queen h3 mate, see? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna we have a nice uh we have a nice um, mating net right in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what does he do here? So he comes there first. Well now he has rook h1. It's a little overloaded though. Okay, let's just keep it nice and clean. Just mobilize, put more pressure on us. You know, just because you sack a piece doesn't mean you gotta go crazy. Just keep building. They're almost gonna collapse. They're about to collapse. The the other rook or something? Yeah, you guys, you guys are getting everything. <laughs> you guys got it all. Okay, F eight. Full mobiles. I mean, just makes sense. Well, I guess you could say, Lynn, we're fully in the middle game, right? Right. <laughs> Wait, let's talk about it. actually when when did the middle game occur? I mean, I would probably say the middle game happened what probably after F five, like after the like after the play begins over here. Like now, nah, we're we're in the thick of it now. Like we haven't fully developed, but you can see we're certainly in the middle game around now. Right. right. Just because right. we haven't developed like a bishop each, but yeah, lots of stuff is happening. Now we're fully in the middle game, right? Everything's out pretty much. And then now we're carrying out our middle game ideas, mobilizing our bishops, going for a mating attack. I really like that bishop of fate. I gotta remember that. <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool idea. So there's the there's the Fisher, knight h8 to f7 to g5. And there's the Stein, bishop f8, sack the d-pawn, bishop c5. That, that's only possible after this unique circumstance right, of, right. with the knight moving away and the bishop not being on f2 or something. But hey, just keep an eye out. But it may, maybe it'll happen in like a modern defense or some other fion kettle or, or maybe a, a dragon where your bishop's transition somehow. Check. A Benoni, it could be any fion kettle opening. But a king's in any particular, the, 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 the bishop tends to get clogged up bite on granite on e5 so it wants to find it you know often like h5 g5 push the pawns and bishop h6 to open it or you rip you sack a pawn and you open it or you sack another pawn and you open it through f8 okay so here we go okay how do we you know this is crazy wait, wait yeah this this move i was baffled by let me see it's just it's so he basically the threat is great in the execution he just doesn't he doesn't execute immediately. We can't really take the G pawn, the queen. He can take the F pawn, but again, that would be the execution. You've got to do whatever you want, right? So what do you guys think? How do you escalate this? Well, queen just moves over to uh, H5. You get, you get on the H file. Well, actually, well, here's the thing though. He does, but the thing is, it's not so clean right now. It's not so clear because what it, you're threatening mate on h3, but what are they? They have a simple response to queen h5. What's that? Rook h1. The rook just comes uh, up to the tempo. So he goes queen h6. Queen h6, yeah. Which is very, it's bizarre in a way. Thanks. But h5 makes more sense. No, it's, it's not bizarre. Really. Like pawn or something. Uh oh, where did it go? I moved my mouse over. There we go. Which move? I was just thinking like H5 makes more sense because maybe you can, oh no, it doesn't really work. I guess. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, taking F3. Oh, but then the bishop takes with the tempo and yeah, just yeah. back to D5. Yeah. You have to time it just right. But if right. we make, well, interestingly, okay. So he, he provokes in a way the rook to come here and then he goes here to oh, G7. Yeah, so first we have the un kettling of the bishop, then we have the, the fion kettling of the queen. What an amazing <laughs> He's so creative, right? Yeah, this is but, really crazy. But it's one of those things where, like, you're just trying to make something work. Like, look, I can't take g3 because there's a pin on my f-bomb. I want the rook to leave so I can put more pressure on f3. I want queen g7 in some lines because I'm going to rip open the diagonal and get to d e5 or d4. But the other thing, what is the other thing? Oh, he can he can also go knight g5. Yeah, knight so the queen in. was actually just in his way. So he's like, you know what? I'm gonna fion kettle my queen, kind of with 
I'm not wasting that much time because I know they're going to go rook h1. So I kind of gain a tempo by, I lose a tempo and I gain a tempo, right? It's like, no, it feels like you're losing time by being attacked, but you, you, you like kind of, it doesn't help, but it helps you more than it helps them. Yeah. What's that, Nikki? Uh, yeah, I was saying, just like you said, it's like provoking it. Right. So you have to spend two moves. They have to spend one move. But now, now we have bigger threats against F3. Because if we take G3, we collapse uh, F3. They take G4, we have Rook F2 check, most likely. It looks very, very bad. Yeah, it's going to walk into our bishop. So that bishop is just a monster right now in C5. You have the, you know, doubled pawn, uh, doubled rooks, I mean. Well, double pawns are fine too, because we're probably gonna take and bring this. We're gonna play g5 and bring the second one and after take. I mean, even if you play this very kind of slowly and mechanically, just go g5, take f3, g4, that's probably gonna be a winning attack. Probably at least win a piece back attack for free. Uh, yeah, it's just too much. But bishop on c5 is creating kind of a mating net, right? Yeah. At knight a4, you just drop it on d4, plant it on d4, and attack the rook in the corner. So. So they take the pawn. No, but really the threat now is just to take uh, G3 and F3. So they take, but you see a difference now. Now the queen is open. So she's she's proving her usefulness on G7. And the knight, remember, the knight can go to G5. We have complete mobilization. Beautiful, huh? So you can see I'm down a piece, down a piece, but it doesn't matter, right? They're now ready to take, and just that's it. They have nothing to do, really. So you're just going to take and play g4 and win the bishop back the, and just crash through and win, right? Win the bishop, then play f3 check, and then play f2 or something and win the queen or whatever. Now they're desperate, desperation. They play this move. And now we have beautiful centralization. I think they're hoping for a line where they take back on f3 and they trade queens or something. Oh, no, think about this. Yeah, think about this. What? Oh, you see this move. If you play f3 right now to win the bishop back, what's going on with your queen? See? And keep in mind, we're we're already we're, we're we have equal pawns. If we give away the pawn, we're going to be down a pawn. So it's it's kind of complicated. So in the end game, so what happens if you go pawn f three check right now? Just looking for like obscure queen trades. Doesn't even work tactically. Actually, does does f three check even get the bishop? Does even win a bishop? What do you guys think? Oh, you can throw in like a, a swish and look or something. If you take e1? Yeah. Um, yeah your queen, well, the e problem is your queen's hanging. What's that? Yeah, like if you place f3, if you just oh, take yeah. off the bishop or something, yeah. and then you could just snap the queen. Uh, though what you could do is um, f3, bishop takes. Uh, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry. The problem is your queen's hanging. Right. And if you take the queen, your bishop's hanging. It doesn't work. No. You can't take, you can't go anywhere dangerous. And then you're just losing. Now you're yeah. just down piece in the end game. Well, well, they, no, they, oh wait, well, I don't know. I, mean, I don't think this is enough. Don't go here and get made it. Okay, they have to go here. I don't think there's a follow-up, is there? Yeah, well, if you go back, I don't know if this works, but like if you go back, F3, no, F3. Yeah, we'll look at we'll look at this move next. <laughs> but um f3. Um bishop takes. I'm looking at rook takes lines, like lines which rook takes f3. Oh, something similar. Oh, because then you can lure them into the line of the bishop. Yeah. The problem is though, problem is the queen's gonna cover g3. See what I'm talking about? They can come out, right? Yeah, that's true. No, does that work? No, no. Oh, that's crazy. Well, that's just complicated. You would have bishop d6. Okay, what if they go here? If they go to g3. Well, now you can get the queen back. But, but that's the thing. You've given up your queen now. So even if you get it back, it's not that great. But the idea is you want to go mate, right? Right. No, no. So they, no, they have to go here. He goes there. Then you bring your rook up. Yeah, the queen just... Oh, yeah, you, you doesn't matter because you're already down a queen. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool line, though. Yeah, and then we're down. We're down now in the end game. We're losing. And then we're going to lose our seat. <laughs> we're losing. No, there is bishop check. There's a bishop court, but still. But yeah, we're losing. We're down. Oh. So, yeah, it's, no, it's worth looking at. Okay, so we see that he played this crazy move. Why does he do this move? What is going on? 
Well, he 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 wants to fork him. Okay. He he wants to fork him because if he takes if he takes a uh, queen, then F pawn moves up, fork both of them, and gets the queen back. Right, and then and then you have a. Uh... Well, then we're gonna have to look at the result, but we're not even down a piece anymore. Actually, we're gonna be down a pawn, maybe. But we have, but the thing is, he no, well, not really, maybe not, because there's a G pawn, right? But he he assesses that he's gonna get the G pawn back. It seems. Well, again, he always had Bishop D six check if he comes up. After you check, you know, if he, you know, if he goes here, that looks uncomfortable. And then you take the queen, and there are issues and everything. Uh, you can take it for yeah. There's that's problematic. That's a nice like. little move to throw in. What's that? That's a nice move to throw in. The yeah, I mean they can block, I guess. No, but then they're just losing a, a piece. Actually, that's losing on the spot because you take with check and you take the queen, then you're up a piece. So they have to just move the queen, the king. Then you take. No, they can't even take back because the because now they're not hanging. You have to go here. Mm. That's bad. Check check and then goodness they got to walk into your bishop again oh no that's a mate so <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool right yeah so well you don't even realize that um that black is well it's down a piece in this game like even yeah exactly no it didn't it, like yeah yeah it felt like he wasn't right Right. Or yeah. didn't know. I mean, once you achieve this position, it doesn't. I mean, it, it's just such a powerful, dominating position. It doesn't matter. We're down. We're down a piece for a pawn, but it doesn't matter because we're coming through here. The point is, we're coming through on the king side, and we have our mobilized queen, bishop. The rooks are ready to. You have so much built up, you know, uh, and potential energy in here. It's going to be unleashed now. Just um. Well, the key. Okay, what's the next move though? He takes. So if they don't take, well, what do they do? If they move the bishop to trade queens, you're just going to take with check and check, and everyone's coming forward. Well, you could take the knight with check, too, unless this is mating. Unless that's mating. That might be mating. No, they have king. Uh, yeah, it's all bad. It's all very, very bad. No, no, I don't want to. I'm going to take with check because, yeah, it doesn't. Well, that's here. Now we're up two pawns. No, we're up, we're up a pawn. And yeah, it's just it's just losing. Oh wait, no, no, that's covered. That's covered. So even if you don't have anything like super concrete right now, well, there's a check, and then there's a check. That's concrete. <laughs> and then there's a mate. So yeah, no, too much, too much. I mean, the pawns are no matter what happens, even if you don't have a mate, it's too strong. The pawn. So yeah, he goes for this to take to try to alleviate, you know, the, the pressure, the pawn storm, trying to slow him down, but he doesn't stop him. Now we're in the end game. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, he takes. She takes it. So it's Black's move now. Because, yeah, yeah, the lines where the king moved. Okay. Then it's then it's the, the pawn's going to take. Then I can't take back. So white, Black has more initiative. Here, it's White's move to try something. Oh, hey, that C pawn's hanging again. That's hanging now. But it, it's it's not. They're not going to promote it anytime soon. You have the bishop and rook covering. You're going to take G4. Seems like the knight's kind of wayward, right? So they come after the rook. And now they can't take it because they'll get forked. Check. Okay, they're winning in exchange. But it's very complicated. So after all of this happened, I don't know if you calculated it all or not, but I assume when he took this, no, he had to calculate because he had to know at least at this point that he was getting enough because otherwise he just won't trade queens. Right. Exactly. So when he does this, he sees all this. And I mean, he, he had that really big buildup, so the queen wasn't even an issue for him at that point. Yeah, it, it just transitions into a, a winning, like late middle game kind of thing, into purely into an end game here. And uh, again, he's about to lose the C pawn, that, that C pawn again, right? You always have to be, that's the thing. White always has the pressure on the C pawn. So if you're not careful, you're going to lose the pawn. They're going to promote the pawn on C7 to C8, right? So you have to be careful. Um, okay, how does he win this though? So we have. Okay, we have what's going on. Equal material, equal pawns up in exchange after all is said and done. Okay, we got to liquidate properly here and just secure this. Take what do we the B pawn? I don't know. Take what? Let me make sure I'm not getting forked or anything. Maybe take the B pawn. Oh, that's a good point. 
you take the B pawn. They take C7, you take C6. Here's the problem. What does that mean? It looks like it might be a problem. Oh, it might, it might well, there is a fork too, I guess, with the rook. Uh, mm. They have knight e, no, I mean, they have knight e seven check, I guess. But then you're not, they're not really taking anything. You just don't take c6, and then they get knight check. But their piece is also really loose. Like they have to watch out for rook f2 check. I think it has a rook f2 check to liquidate. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> no, you no, know, the only reason he does it though, well, he gains a tempo on the knight. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. So now we're up an entire, so he's about to be lost if we can stop him from promoting. That's his last hope here. But yeah, otherwise, if he didn't have this resource, like if this didn't work out for him, then absolutely. Maybe it's, maybe it's good too. I think, I think no it's, way. Good. You're, you're well, this way you're sure he has nothing after. Yeah. Yeah. If he had anything, you got to take B5. But he, he had determined that there's just not enough. And it's kind of cool because he has his own ideas with the bishop and That's the knight. So yeah, check it out. Huh? Um, couldn't you have taken b5 now? Here? Yeah, with like rook d5 ideas. Uh, no, no, it doesn't work. Why not? I don't think so. Because he has the pass c pawn. Right? Well, I think you stop it. The knight is going to, the knight dangerous. is guarding it. It's very it. dangerous. Let yeah, me the see. The knight is guarding it. So I don't mind. You, you well, I, think he ha I think he has time to, to defend uh, it. Wait. Yeah. Now, yeah. Hey, can he? It looks yeah. very dangerous with the pawn. Can we? Can, is there a tactic? Oh, because our bishop's not there anymore. Mm. <sighs> There's some promotion tactics possible. Let's see. Yeah, you just take the knight and then take the pawn. But which one is he going to do? Which one? It's white's move though. White, white might have something with. Two oh, it's white's pawn. move. Because white's going to hang. White's going to hang a knight. Which one? Which knight are they going to hang? Hmm. The C knight. Because he well, how can they? They want to support. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Well, they want to make it to the rook. No, you know what? But He's gonna hang the. Well, it, didn't, it didn't seem like a goodness, but maybe I don't know. You have to. It looks dangerous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because he, can like him, he can fork him at e e seven, and so he'll hang the the b knight and get a check on the king, and yeah, then I feel get like, the rook. No, I think like maybe if you move this the right way. Oh, this is there crazy. You have, to find, you have to find this is like a puzzle right here. White to I think there's only one move because because black always has checks. If you try to keep the rook away, like from coming here, they have checks and wrap around and at least yeah. hold the seat. What is the win for, for what is the win right? I think it's a win. Well, I think it's e7, knight to e7, checking the king and no, oh, no, it's on uh it's on c5 now though. Oh, oh they, they, so they used to they used to have it. Here, no. Oh, okay, okay. Some other line they had it, but not in this line. Okay. What, okay. okay what do we? How do we make sure we can? Okay, we have to. Basically, we have to hang on knight. Let them. But if they take the knight, then you can't stop the promotion. How do we do it? Oh, knight. Knight d four. Sorry, I'm looking at knight d three. Knight where? Knight where? Oh, knight. Knight b three. Sorry. Knight, knight b three. I think that wins. You guys, because here's the concept. You can't allow them to come when they take a knight. Well, if they don't get a knight, then you're just like that's dangerous, right? But they do want to take the knight. They can't get. They can't move. They can't check to wrap, and they can't come down. Thanks. Isn't crazy. Oh yeah. Game over immediately. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that the move. So yeah, I was looking. I'm like, I. But to goodness, I'm like, I know there's something here. That's, <laughs> that's why he didn't yeah, do it. Your senses, your spider senses. Yeah, I mean, if you have, if you're dealing with two knights and a pawn, and this knight can't help you, it's very dangerous. So he, but the point is, he just didn't even need that. Yeah, I, I wonder. But like, let's say, okay, but look, if he doesn't take a knight. Well, then you're just going to like take a seven. and Yeah, he's just going to take a seven. This is, no, it's the same thing. It's just losing. Yeah, it's just losing because check, you can't come to, well, eh, no, no, there's nothing. There's nothing because you yeah, can't. You can't even wrap around. There's no, there's no way to cover the, the pawn. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, that's yeah. Good, no, that's a really good question. It's a really good question. Um, We have to, we have to verify that. That's no. very interesting. But then he, okay, so he's doing this. Uh, and then he, yeah, so he retreats. So he's up in exchange still. He's down in exchange for a pawn, but he has a lot going on on the king side now. So he just needs to make sure he deals with the queen side that he wins. Check. Okay, why did he do that? What's coming next? So this is more about, rather than purely defend the C pawn, this is more about uh, counterattack. What's his, how does he uh, escalate this counterattack? Uh, bring in his knight. Does he have time? You have mating patterns, right? Okay. 
you know, like maybe knight f6? Yeah, we're going to mate in three moves, see? Oh, I didn't know that. Smothered. But... We're going to go for smothered mate, right? Well, there's more. There's at least a smothered mate pattern, too. You have a second mating pattern, which makes it really strong. You guys see that? You see the first mating pattern? Yes. How would you go mate? How would you try and mate him here? Oh, knight g... Knight g4? Yeah, the king, the king is stalemate on h well, quote, stalemate on h1, so you just need to check him with the knight. Yeah, knight g4. So they have to go, they uh, mate on f2. You guys see it? You guys all see it, right? Mm -hmm. Then they're going to uh, go, they're going to try to stop you. So again, like, they'd be very, this is where, you know, you could lose this. Again, if you do, like, something, this would be a blunder, because I'm, again, I just sense this. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's just, that's bad. I mean, probably losing so yeah it's it's very hard to stop those pawns and what is he even trying he's going to push here push push it back uh maybe oh no wait there's that move but does that even work nope tempo no that just can't it just can't be i don't know is it is it maybe we could give up our stuff for like the last night or something i'm not really sure maybe look no. at this move. this is crazy you have stuff like this ah Wait, no, 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 I don't know about that. I don't know about that. It's just take. No, no, they take. No, they take. It almost works. Uh, I don't know. This looks, I, again, like, I don't want to go into this, but. Yeah, there's no way. That's like, yeah. No, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay, wait, what about this way? No, then they take this one. Yep. Maybe. No, maybe there's a better version of it. So, okay, wait. So maybe we don't push immediately. I don't know. Let, let's, we have to try this. Oh, check this out. Oh, no. Now, yeah. now they oh they check and take this one <laughs> no wait 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 hold on is there time okay then the rook comes over there might be time huh i mean yeah yeah but white can hold black can stop it i don't know maybe they like barely hold it uh takes takes there's a check right check and then where's the rook go here maybe yeah amazingly wait there's i feel like there's something huh there's like maybe some, maybe some, he some just put, start marching his pawn up here no oh, it's, 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 it's white smooth yeah bishop just takes the other pawn is rook and bishop versus knight to win is it a first win rook and bishop versus knight oh i imagine so yeah because because the, the knight's gonna get trapped rook bishop or yeah the knight's gonna you're gonna pin the knight or something like yeah that's gotta be a win rook against because rook against knight is barely a draw Right, so you include a bishop, I'm sure, yeah, because you could do like waiting moves and stuff. Yeah, they can't hold that. But b7, uh, yeah, you have to look at every combination, but now they just take, that's crazy. I wonder though, like, wait, so again, wait, what was it? But you just don't need that. Like, no, the point is that you have a mate. So, <laughs> no, but it seemed like a blunder because I'm like, it looked like it was, uh, like there was something there. But at any rate, you have to deal with those pawns whether or not they push, it's just, a, it's just a headache, whether or not they push now or do some maneuver. Well, there's, you know, I don't know, just to look really quick. There's even stuff like uh, maybe they move the knight first. I mean, there's just too many options that you have to deal with that you don't want to deal with. But I feel like there's like lines where you hang your knight like this, because you're not really hanging your knight to the fork because you have to deal with this one. And then now we have additional ideas like pushing the C pawn, right? I don't know. There's just a lot. Maybe, maybe they hold in every line. I don't know. No, now there's this line. <laughs> See? See, and then we're in trouble, right? You just don't, point is you don't need all that. There's too much, uh, even if you can calculate it all, don't mess with it because you have a win, which is? It's a knight tower, it's not e2. Wait, which move? It's a knight e2. Rook to h2. No, rook, rook, uh, rook to h2. Well, rook here's the thing. There, there are the two mate. Well, there's the two mating patterns, guys, right? We have we have this three here. So we have back rank mate ideas. Plus, we have the knight f2 smothered mate. And they can't, these guys are not helping out. The only one that can help out is this knight, which we're going to undermine. We're going to overload it. Okay. And the king can't. So you don't even need to do it, Lynn, right? We're just going to come over here, and then we have our mate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That makes oh, sense. Yeah, 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 they, can, yeah. Uh, they can do that. <laughs> but 
yeah that's that'd him, be, yeah. We, can, we can come back and then main on the next move so yeah um that's all they could do otherwise they're going to get made it into there's nothing from rook h2 it's just it's just a dead end i mean you just again kind of like the other move you just don't need it okay yeah uh, you don't need it yeah well, uh, because the knight is a, is a pawn on your side, so you want to go ahead yeah. on and situate yourself so you can get rid of him and get your get your mate at the same time. Yeah, you're using more of the long range power yeah. of the room. You well, in this case, you're utilizing short range. The short the bishop doesn't need long range power. He's kind of acting like a pawn, and then the knight's fully utilized here. The knight's either utilized to, as a mating net or as the check or the rook and bishop create the mating net. And the knight checks, so the checker is either the one who does the checks is either the rook or the knight. To finish it, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Game. Now, as for the flow, it's always nice. Again, kind of, well, we didn't quite skim read that one. We spent some time on it, but no, we skimmed through most of it. But the key, no, I mean, this was worth spending a lot of time. Yeah, it's on. worthwhile I mean, to spend every, time on. Yeah, every you know, pretty much every move has its purpose. Oh, what else are you saying, Nikki? Yeah, it's just worthwhile to go through the whole thing. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you really liked this idea, right? Yes. And then we have the, I mean, the most bizarre move is the queen. Eight. Like, who's <laughs> the queen queen. Who, I don't know if it's the best move or not. I I, I feel it like it probably really is. I mean, I just don't clever. see anything else. Yeah, it's so strong once you do. It's brilliant. It, it, it was very creative. And, and you can consider it like a waiting move. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it's like, well, it, it's like, it's almost like a, it's a waiting. It's like with a decoy and a, a, a very uh, subtle maneuver. Yeah. But really the kind of move that you make. Of necessity, it's like process elimination because like, nope, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work because my queen's in the wrong place. And when I do this move, like, oh, cool, now his rook has to move away. Yeah, it stops queen h3, so they can't deal with h3 and f3 adequately, and that's where they got in trouble on f3 because the rook was gone, right? Yeah. And then and then that enabled us to enter a um, an exchange up end game. I don't know. It's just a I mean, obviously the attack continues right now. No, now, you're, now you're threatening. I think you're threatening. Uh, yeah, rook f2 check, trade, trade, and then the, the rook falls on d1. See? So you want your rook check on, yeah, just rook check on f2. You see that? So, like, let's say they take here. Probably the best move. Yeah, this is pretty clean cut. No, you can do this check too. But if you want to, yeah, yeah, just do that check. That's probably easiest. Yeah. But I think this doesn't matter that it's, it's just a question of like the, the best. Uh, yeah, I know. This is clean. This is clean. And then and again, we have the bishop check too. So they probably go in the corner. And then, yeah, we just have too much. It's actually kind of similar in a way, but now we won the entire rook. We just have a whole rook. And every every time we can always bring our bishop back to cover c8 along with rook. Yeah, they're not doing anything with this. But hey, it's just crazy because they always have that counterplay. Uh, but yeah, you see the flow of the game, key concepts, where you get your king's Indian stuff going. Then you have, uh, as you found goodness, you have the queen g5 followed by, no, then you saw that probably. And then, then you found h5. And then you just have this, mo this monstrous pawn storm. Great example. Well, it's kind of like, yeah, rather than g5, g4, it was h5 takes g4. Huge pawn storm. Double pawns benefit you because you can use the h file. And then once you have this, I like this, you know, perfect centralization over here with the knight. It's kind of hanging out, but the knight can come back later. I think it did come. Didn't the knight come out or no? No, the knight comes out to mate at the end. <laughs> right? yeah, the knight he the end. <laughs> yeah, he waited till the end and then he's ready and then he resigns. Uh, he resigns away. I think he resigned here. So yeah, uh, great game. Uh, I was thinking maybe if you guys want, you could do like a practice game in his style. So just think, you know, just try to play kind of free, just kind of free flowing pieces, you know. And you know what I meant? Like in the email, I'm kind of talking about the swagger. There's a certain swagger to his player. We just kind of fling it, the type of player who just sort of flings pieces around. Mm -hmm. Just like he just moved that queen back to <laughs> back there. He just tucked him away. That was a little swag. <laughs> yeah, and especially especially the knight d5 hanging the knight and stuff on d5 and like just hopping all around the queen side with his pieces and like letting them just go ahead, take my b pawn with your knight. I just move my king away and I keep attacking you. <laughs> right. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you guys have any takeaways? Or you want you guys, somebody want to, maybe two of you can do a practice game and try to play in the style of, uh, of Stein, this type of super active play. Because I don't know, do, you, do any of you guys like kind of not do that? And avoid avoid that and kind of just play solidly. Yeah, that's me. Goodness, yeah. See, sometimes you you have to win this way. Well, it, hel it just helps you win. Sometimes the position requires it. Other times it'll just help you uh, get some chances. Like you have to, but it's a style that'll, you know, if you need to play for a win, right? 
I mean, it's right. chess, should be playing for a win. So, but I mean, obviously some people play for a win by being solid and maneuvering and hoping their opponent makes a mistake or stop playing them slowly. That's a style. The interesting thing about Ryshevsky is he can do that, but he's also dynamic, not as much as this maybe, but he can also be super dynamic. Whereas someone like Petrosian or Karpov, especially Karpov, not very dynamic at all. That's not his default. But but Karpov, is great, sack, right? Karpov is great to learn from too. What's that? Remember the queen sack though. That was pretty awesome. Even though yeah, that was yeah. kind of solid. And he saw that he had the opportunity. I mean, he was pressing for an advantage. Yeah. And that was like the only way that he could do anything, right? So he kind of yeah. had, he was almost like not backed into a corner. <laughs> no, he was, he was, he was propelled for, into a, <laughs> to a brilliant <laughs> sacrifice. Good to go. All right, like, so who wants, who wants to play a game? Uh, I'm going to check out David, but uh, uh, in the future, can you bring some Isaac Lenipsky games? Oh, right. You mentioned, okay. Lenipsky. Yeah, yeah. Not, not right away, whenever you want to, but. Uh, I think he, he's an awesome uh, player, so. Okay, I'll just pull him up. L-N-I-T or something? It's L-I-P N. Oh, I got it. I got e it. Yeah, Isaac. Lip, Lip, oh, Lipnitsky. Okay. Lipnitsky. I can never pronounce Lipnitsky. his name. Okay. But, uh, I think he's awesome. He died early, and that's why a lot of people are not aware who he is and what he did. You say he died when he was young? Yeah, he did. Well, uh. And he was from Ukraine as well. He he's buried in Kiev. Oh, interesting. Yeah, a lot of and it says he's a master. So I guess he wasn't a GM, but a strong master. A lot of uh, some theoretical country contributions and stuff. I he was a U Ukrainian champion, and he died early. So you know he didn't. Well, get well same thing with Stein. Stein died at thirty eight, apparently of a heart attack. Yeah, I think he died because he was in the war, and maybe some war chemicals or something killed him. But he died uh, very young. Stein or this guy. Lenipsky. Interesting. Um, yeah, I think I think someone said that. Not, uh, well, at least he's, he has a cigarette in his mouth in the, in the picture. But I think he was a, apparently uh, not not. Yeah, I don't want to say it wrong, but I think someone said he was a heavy drinker. Well, as a lot of chess players. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I but, mean, put aside all all of all of all of the stuff like that, and and he's a good player. I, 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 yeah, and I, I, and I, just to clarify, I'm referring to uh, Stein. At least that's, yeah, that's what my student who mentioned it, Jordan, I think he said. Yeah, I don't want to get it wrong. But, uh, okay, well, he, he died of, uh, oh, and he was in World War II, you said. Oh, only 35, the other one died. Of yeah, 30. yeah. Wait, what is that, Polly? Oh, something's wrong with it, with the blood. Interesting. But uh, yeah, it's too bad in the 38. But, they, but yeah, obviously, he made a lot of contributions. Well, thanks, Lynn. I know you got to go. So I will. Yeah, we'll, I got to go. We'll so you all I'll enjoy the weekend and enjoy the oh, fireworks. You too, Lynn. You okay, too. bye bye. 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 Thanks. So uh, yeah, who wants to play? You're going to get a couple of you guys playing super act. Well, goodness, you want to work on your hype. Uh, who wants I'm to play? I'm going to go game? too. I'm gonna out. All right, Nikki, have a great Fourth of July. Weekend. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, David. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Uh, uh, who wants to play? When I could get a game, I have. I'm actually going to play in a tournament in like three hours. You uh, said you you said you want to play a game. Yeah, I could get a game. I have a tournament. Yeah, I get warm up. Okay, is anyone uh, other? Okay, anyone want to play goodness, or I could play you. I guess who wants to play? You want to play me then? Yeah, I could play. You. Goodness is pretty strong. Yeah, what's uh, let's see. What's your lead chess? Are you on lead chess? Yeah. What's your lead chess rating around? Just so they have a sense. Not that it matters because you should play them anyway. But what's it, what's your rating around now? Uh, my blitz rating is like, I don't remember. Let me check. Um, Probably at least two. I would imagine at least 2,000. 2,047. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. What you, yeah, let's do five, what, like maybe five plus five or something. Like not super fast, but just to play intuitively, you know, okay. just play intuitively and actively. I mean, obviously then during your tournament, you're going to play uh, carefully. Wait, which tournament is it? Uh, it's like a rapid tournament. So I'm in Austin for like the summer. Oh, well, you're in Austin right now. Yeah, I'm in Austin right now. So, is it through a college? Is it through a college or just like a local? Nah, just, just a local Austin. tournament. Huh? Just a local tournament. Cool. All right. So, let's. Uh, what's your username again? Just your name or something? I actually, I have you, so I can challenge you. Okay. Uh, All right. So, we have five, five. All right. Good luck. Oh, we're doing graded. We're doing graded. Whatever. It's all right. Okay. I know that. that yeah. That 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 okay. So we're, no, it doesn't really matter, but we're both going to, yeah, I guess friendly game. <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs>
Uh, but yeah, so we're both going to play hyperactive chess. Wait, what's the time control? Like 45 or 30 in your tournament? Five. Hmm? Yeah, it's supposed to be a rapid time. G, G and what you said? What do you say? G, G and what? Game and what? 25. 25. Oh, that's pretty fast. But yeah, so if you do five plus five, you're going to be in the zone to move pretty quickly. Uh, all right. So you have white again. So um, yeah, I mean, sure, I'll, I'm not going to play that crazy, but let's definitely look for opportunities to be dynamic, right? Yeah, hey, feel free. We can chat a little bit. You guys feel free. So we still have uh, John, Richard, and Matt. You guys are still here too. Oh, I don't really, I don't really play King's Indian. I, I do, uh, I've been met, I, especially in Blitz, I like the hippo, so. Yeah, I have a problem against the hippo. Oh, you have a problem against it? Okay, we'll try to play very aggressively against it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of modern, excuse me, basically modern defense. Small center setups. Nim Nimsvich covers that. But yeah, pretty much like perk, a little bit different. I think it's called perk small center defense, or the or the the reversed rat or something. Yeah, I like to go H because I know that people like to go queen bishop H six. So H six. So queen D two. You don't let them in. And you, you force them to figure something out there. Finish the hippo setup. Yeah. Get a proper hippo. Double fan cut on. But it's interesting because if I the moment I play like e5 or c5 or something, it's like very normal, you know. So it could become like a very typical opening at some point. But c5 is kind of hard to play because it weakens d6. Okay. That'd be very bold of me to play G5 right now. <laughs> but, oh yeah, that's what we're doing, right? <laughs> um, nine of six is a move. Oh, someone is trying to take off, I think. What are you saying? Oh, yeah, he's got to take care of his kidney. See you, Richard. Thanks for coming. All right. So I'm looking at G5 as the crazy move. Um, knight F6 is the interesting thing people don't always expect is this knight F6 move. Like if they play H4, it's like, oh, knight F6 to G4, or H, you know. So knight F6 could be very interesting because um, it does get a tempo on E4 for what it's worth. Let's see. Yeah, nine f six is sort of interesting. It does get a tempo. It's it's more it's solid, but like it unleashes stuff. I mean, like you have to be careful. So I want to see how you handle it. Like, do you go for d five or e five or something, or do you not commit? So I'm like asking my opponent to commit.
I think I hallucinated something. That's okay. Um, I'm thinking I have more pressure on you five. That's okay. All right. All right, we're getting dynamic now. Yeah. We're practicing our dynamic. We're practicing dynamics. But that's where, yeah. So that's why you went for E5, right? You have E5. I allow it. We throw our pieces around. See where it goes. Now, then it unleashes. Then at some point, the position just uncorks and things happen beyond our control almost. Keep your time on the clock. Just play intuitive, you know. Play active, play solid. I mean, I am always down on the clock, but just try obviously not to get down like a minute. Just trying to figure out um whether D5 worked, but I don't think it quite does. Oh, D5 then. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I'm probably pretty happy to take your bishop in that line because the pieces are opening up, right? Yeah. I like to go to F5. I totally messed this up in my last turn. I did the wrong time. But I always like to do this because it's like a Dutch. You put some pressure in. But yeah, you can definitely. It works well in blitz games a lot of times. So how do you reply to this? Obviously, I have weaknesses. F4 is tempting, but I don't think it does that much. It just opens up E4. Got to resist that one. Then we discard this for now. Queen takes or pawn takes? Yeah, queen takes my like c5. Pawn takes, pretty solid. Gives dynamic possibilities to, to do that. Keep the pawns together. Yeah, that's pretty strategic. I think pretty strategic maneuvering game. How many dynamic? Well, the dynamics would be like another pawn break if it works.
Yeah, I want to take. I wanted to take the knight and take e five probably. So I was like, okay, that's not going to happen. Now he wants to take h five possibly. F four doesn't work. You take h five, take this. Come back. So yeah, so far not super dynamic, but that's okay. We have our chance. <laughs> we'll do it when we can. But yeah, we're still being we're both being aggressive though. Diagonal. Okay, provoking G5. Okay, I will give in and do it now. Yeah, that's my idea. So. That kind of maneuvering game. Wait for something to happen. Something's going to happen soon, I'm sure. Another break. Coordinate. I missed a fork. What's that? No, I think I missed a fork. You had a fork? Night before. Night before, sorry. Before. Oh, you could have won the A pawn, huh? Yeah. Uh, oh, maybe I'd have like rook A1, though, and then I'd take A2. I mean, rook A8, then I would get A2 or something. What to do? You want to add a little time to the clock? Yeah, I think so. We're like, let's do like what a minute? Okay, do like a minute thirty. How about that? Let's add like, add, let's add each other's time. Yeah, let's do a minute thirty. In. Okay, I'm talking around there. All right, we'll play it. Yeah, play it happen there. Yeah, uh, we're, we're just getting in the middle game, so gotta have a little time. Um, A major concession. Mm, oh, yeah, diagonal. I mean, if I push it, like loses its dynamism. Again, we're going a great, yeah, this is the moment where like you choose dynamics. This yeah. is definitely a choice. Because then obviously there's, oh, wait, I thought I need, what am I doing? I'm hallucinating. Uh, I'm just going to go for, e no, I do have e5. I do have e5 because then, because it would open up against the queen, yeah, sure. No, like, it's very interesting.
Mm. Again, Dinah, I'm thinking, should I push? I mean, I could play F4. But like, okay, name of the game. Let's go crazy. Dynamics. I mean, I have like 94 follow-up. Can you take it? I don't think I have too, many, too much of an option. No, you could have played knight b5. Oh, yeah, I th yeah, I think I get an exchange then. Right? I think I get the exchange. <laughs> or just take the bishop, maybe. Well, at least you get... Oh, no, actually, you would get rid of my bishop, though. So I'm like, do I want that? No, the dynamic move is not. But yeah, it's dangerous if I win the exchange quote win You gotta be a little bit careful. It's very dynamic. Yeah, it's very it's important that I kept the bishop because it's a it's a good attacker. You see the concept? Yeah. Rook G8, yeah. Okay, well, you just got to be careful. Try and hold it. King can move over, I guess. Give my king some wiggle room. Yeah. And I don't want to get mated on h6. I have to take a check. What is going on? I mean, I just try to increase the pressure. I probably have to retreat the bishop. That's fine. Yeah, I think I have to. Oh, no, bishop e3 is better. Yeah, yeah, bishop e3. Again, which move? Dynamic move. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Eh. You have a check. No, you know what? Sometimes you just got to keep it tight. Sometimes you just got to keep it tight. Just got to keep it tight. Nothing wrong with that. I think I just blundered. With, I either take it or knight g6. I'm not sure. I think this is probably okay. Yeah, but I think a bishop g7 was important because, like, I had to stop your counterplay. It would have meant there's no need to get, like, too loose all the time, right? <clears throat> oh, yeah, I forgot you had that move. Yeah, and then I have, yeah, it's tough because there are, like, pieces flying around your king. It's tough to avoid the tactic. Yeah, I think it's over. It's a rook, yeah. I'm pretty sure mates for us. Do I do I check? I don't know. I probably just when in doubt, just take the rook. I don't know. I mean check is interesting, but Just focus on something concrete, right? Just push the pawn. Hmm. That's good enough. Fortunately, it's defended. Why is this not good? Uh, it's tactic. 
في جيم اوف ثرونز Good game, man. Well, that was crazy. You know, we just kind of had fun with it. Like, let's just throw pieces around. But there was one blunder, right? It was, I mean, it was a tricky position. There was one blunder, I think. No, I think you just shouldn't take with your queen. Well, you should just play when I took on D4. Just don't take with your queen. See you, John. Thanks. Yeah. Enjoy your weekend. Oh, you took off. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, you see the screen? I was doing it real quick. You see the screen? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're doing fine. Like we were both kind of playing provocative and everything. Oh yeah, let's see if you miss knight b5. I'm not sure. I think I had rook a8 to take. I didn't look at it. Oh, you had it right now, huh? Yeah. Uh, no, oh, no, not, no, not yet, not yet. Only when the. No, only after queen e8. Yeah. I know it's kind of interesting. Like it's hard to say if anyone's better. It's just like I'm trying to be aggressive on the king side. Maybe you try and take advantage of the weak. It's like a Dutch sort of right. But uh, did you have it now? Yeah, I, I think I just uh, have rook a8 maybe if I need it. See you, Matt, eventually. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so it says, plus, yeah, it says like basically even. It's saying plus 0.3. But yeah, yeah, so it's saying uh, knight, knight here. Uh, yeah, it's not a huge deal, I think. Do I, I, probably, I probably guard the d-pawn though, right? Maybe I go to... Um, how do I guard it if I want to? D5. Just go do what? D5. Nah, I I don't no, then I open up your rook and I weaken my position, right? No, I think I just do that and I give it to you. Yeah, I don't think it does anything. I think I'm safe, right? Because you can't really go here. I take B2. So let's say you, I don't know, queen B3. Actually, maybe I use the A file now. Yeah, so it's probably not a big deal for me, right? Computer said. No, it is a big deal. Oh, you have 93. What's that? I said now there's 93. Yeah, yeah. It's just go back. Yeah, just go back. So it's not a huge deal, right? And it's still similar position. Although now you have more counterplay on the A file. I mean, it's just neutralized, but maybe if you want to trade pieces. Yeah, my goal is to strike at D4 or to bother your bishop pretty much in this kind of position. And then your goal is what? To kind of play on the queen side and break through at the right moment, maybe? I mean, you want to be able to, like what happened in the game when I messed up is I, I played like F5 and H6 and, and he just plays D5 and we traded. No, he got D5 in where like I, he had it planted in there and then he had knight D4. Like, oh no, <laughs> he never quite, yeah, it wasn't that simple for him, but it was, it was bad structure. For me. It says we're dead even. I mean, it's, it's a, anyway, it's equal chances. Yeah. So yeah, it was an interesting game. Oh, flip it for your side. So Yeah, it likes my position, I guess, a bit now. But now, yeah, I certainly have. Yeah, you, you're like, oh, that was a concession. You didn't need that. It likes not F1. But yeah, you didn't need this move. Well, again, I was thinking, I think this is kind of static to uh, to push. It felt kind of too static, you know? Because like you said, the main concession is this, right? Yeah. But then if I go here, I don't let you attack. But then again, you can go like here and then G3 and you can challenge me if you want to. Or you could just sit there. I don't know. It's probably like about even. No, it really likes my position. Oh, it likes e5. Uh, but what is the best move here? It's saying, yeah, it likes this. Yeah, that was the best. Because it's just dynamic and it makes sense. Like my, yeah, it's a pawn storm. So maybe then black's better at that point, right? It says about even, actually. It says you can play h5. But yeah, this was tempting. I thought you should have got knight b5, though. See? Yeah, I missed knight b5. Yeah, I, this was well, the... I didn't miss knight b5. I missed like the tactics with. Yeah. Like with this. Was this was this good enough? It likes it, but it, it really likes this move. Why? I don't understand this. Is it knight f5 coming or something? If you go here, what? It's kind of hard to understand. Oh, oh, sure, sure, sure. That wins material. Uh, what about the other move? Is there some knight move as well? Come after the queen. Oh, she's very, yeah, she's very limited. Yeah, this looks like a very computer play. Where like nothing is sufficient enough. Everything's just hanging. Very what play you said? Like a very computer play. Like as if you're playing a computer. <laughs> right. But it's, right, but it's it's pretty straightforward. If you find F4, if I find this, it's pretty straightforward. Because then the queen, 
because this fails to knight h5 and this fails to, well that's just dangerous because you see that the queen has no moves and then well that's kind of no that's not that hard to see honestly because it's a discovery and then it wins like queen for two pieces yeah it's not that hard to see but you have to but f4 is kind of tricky to see anyway i did this move which i guess is good enough and then that's when it says it's again i i missed stuff why is this working not f5 oh wow pieces just unleash oh the queen gets trapped huh she like almost trapped what happens here it's just at least, it. at least it wins like an exchange or something oh that's nasty Wait, what is going on after king f1 there's more tactics oh you even have the even this is a move no that's crazy you can't move because the bishop is mate nobody took with the point oh no, never mind never mind no because the queen's covering laterally uh what were you saying I said no you took with the pawn like this oh that's oh this is the right way to go that's insane yeah that is insane so there's a lot of bad lines there um yeah so basically this move sorry I, so i was just thinking like hey this yeah that's when that was key though as i knew that was strong i figured you have to take this way because you have to patrol the diagonal so basically just watch out this was a quick game but it was like a lot of defensive moves that you needed to find but I certainly, yeah, the bishops gave me a nice initiative with the pawns storming. So, yeah, I don't know how you avoid it. I have a problem with that. Dynamic. I think F4. I think it was F4. What's that? I have a problem with dynamic play. Like, I tried playing, I was playing, I played the tournament two weeks ago. And I drew my game. I was, like, I felt, I had like a feel for the position. Like, I made a couple of good moves. And I had a feel for the position. Like, this position is meant to be winning. But I just couldn't find the few critical, like dynamic plays that like actually sealed the game. Actually, hung a piece, but he missed it, and then I just somehow drew the game eventually. Yeah, and of course, when you look at the computer, it's like, oh, you're plus seven or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was like I was plus plus three. I was like, I didn't see, and I'd like I, I had like ten minutes, and I didn't see anything. Like, yeah, pick. no, it's not. That's the thing. Like nowadays, though, the computer will be like, "Oh, you're up a pawn with a good position. Oh, you're plus six. But obviously, in human play, you can easily lose the pawn back, or you miss something and they gain a better position. You know, so it's yeah. not. So I wouldn't look too much at the evaluation unless it's something obvious uh, that you like think you can really find in a real game or that makes sense to you, like right away. Um, but uh, no, I think you're doing fine. So it's interesting. Somehow you got like a little bit squeezed here, though despite your center no i think it's because black has like the pawns coming there's yeah. like no i think the mistake was f4 like in principle because then you lose yeah you, as you said it was a comp you knew it was a compromise like look it gives it doesn't like wait what does it like here yeah yeah knight b5 was sort of and then your play there and then it was just like and then it just went downhill after this move that's yeah, the, went down, went down. what was i supposed to do here even here f so basically the idea is to launch the knight what if the oh you can't move the queen anywhere? What about here? I could at least get the exchange. But again, I don't really want to. Oh, this is hanging too, though. No, what am I thinking? No, this is hanging. So yeah, let's go here and take the bishop. So uh anyway, yeah. So the idea is this one. What was the line again? Is the queen just trapped? Oh, because it forces this nasty uh yeah, bishop check. Yeah, the, so basically it's like a typical situation where like King's Ending where the D pawn's weak. And uh, yeah, and then it allowed me more like F4 and stuff. Well, it weakened uh, the diagonal. So pretty much that's it. Anyway, it was a fast game, but you get the idea. Um, yeah. yeah, it got very interesting though. So, but as for how to avoid all that, well, again, I, I went pretty aggressive with F5. I don't know. F5, it says the best move, but... Oh, that's funny. It likes you did queen d3. It just wants you to do a queen c2. That's yeah, really I, fig I figured I had to huh? I had to do I figured I had to do like deal with the bishop somehow, but I didn't figure I didn't know what was the difference. So yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look like I mean this is normal because you have bishop d3, but I don't know. I think it's just like pretty even. It says plus one. I think it's pretty I mean you're more solid than me, but as you said, d5. That's where you want to get dynamic, but you don't want to do it premature. Oh, wait, what was that moment where you're looking at doing it earlier, right? No, I hallucinated because I thought that e5. I would. I hallucinated e5. here. I thought I was gonna have more pressure on e5. What's that? Oh, it was after e5. Um, oh, oh, right now. Yeah, I don't know because I'm yeah, gonna I get d5. At the very I least, think... I get the bishop pair, and then I have like blowing. I'm like blowing up in lines. Yeah, normally I will have like. Um... Yeah, this is good for black. I think. 
bishops are opening up. This is weak, right? Yeah, there's a problem when the knight moves, you can win this pawn in a lot of cases. And hold, it's going to play g5 at some point. Yeah, that's a problem, though. Holding, you might lose the pawn, right? Just like bishops are dangerous. Yeah. This one, I don't know what is going on. You get that pawn, though. What if you take that one? Oh, that's crazy. I could just take the a pawn. Yeah, it's just a pawn, I guess. With the but the bishop pair is very strong. So anyway, uh, yeah. So the just the main concept that you don't need to give me the bishop pair in that position. So anyway, you found the right move, I think. F5 was the right move, just queen c2. And it likes, I wasn't sure about this move. What's the follow through though? Oh. Now I got to worry about this knight. Because I so thought- what's the difference between that and my, knight and my queen on, on c2? What's that? What's the difference between this line and the line where my queen is on c2? I guess there are lines where I trade queens or something. Wait, why is it like this move though? Do, can't you take- Oh, if you take here, do I take your d-pawn? Oh, now I have that threat too. So maybe, but in general, like the queen is just kind of like more comfortably placed, you know, because you have bishop d3. Who knows, maybe like king h1, oh, you can't really do that. Yeah, it's difficult to handle. That's why I like the hippo. <laughs> it's annoying, right? Yeah. It's the kind of thing you get in blitz games. But like, like I said, knight f6 is very interesting because a lot of, like, especially when they play h4, like, oh, I'm gonna attack. It's like, wait, knight f6, now they're gonna come in here. They can always go h5 or they can go knight h4. So, so knight f6 and they're attacking this one or they play f5 first. But it's kind of like, yeah, it's like Owen's defense, you know, or the like early b7. And then, yeah, it's just annoying to handle. But that's the thing. Like when I'm playing with white, generally speaking, I don't like to move all three pawns. I'll just try and in that sense, I keep it tighter if I'm going to play this kind of thing. But yeah, actually what my coach did at Kobe in, uh, in high school, have you heard of Verusian at Kobe? Oh, yeah. I met, I met, I met him at Panam last year. Oh, that's cool. That's a nice conversation. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, he's a cool guy. So yeah, he, he would play the bishop g5 one. I'm not sure if he still plays it. But this is not. I like the way I like this line because like let's see what right here. Just tuck it back. Let's say oh g5. I don't know. Like, let's say something normal. Uh, that's not even a move. <laughs> What's the main? Uh, let's say castles. Uh, you could play no. I think e3 is the main concept, and you know, but it's more positional. You're pretty much going to play like for b4, you know, c5 or something with the rooks. And, so stuff like that is tight. But you can still get aggressive, or actually, I've I've usually played like more Catalan style, but I don't know. It's not that aggressive against the King's Indian. So, what do you normally play against the King's Indian? Bayonet. The bayonet attack. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, that's all fine. But of course, uh, black. And this is weird because it's like a transpositional King's Indian. So, black doesn't have to play like King's Indian setup. I kind of did. I no, I didn't really get. It. I didn't get e5 in right. You got e5. Yeah, so it's like some other beast, right? It's a completely different beast right here. It's just, this is just double Fianchetto stuff. Almost like Alakonsha. Yeah, it's interesting. Anyway, no, you, you played well. Um, I think it was mainly the f4. Your queen got a little bit, yeah, your pieces got a little bit misplaced, the queen and the bishop, and then like f4 weakened your position. So I think that's about it. But uh, yeah, yeah, nice. Good luck today. So yeah, maybe do another uh, blitz game or something to warm up. Uh, yeah. When are you playing? Games is in two hours, so I'm gonna get ready. All right, man. Good luck. I'll see you. Hopefully, you could drop by uh, during okay. uh, yeah during summer. Come by to more of the classes. We'll train some more. Okay. All right. Bye. See you, goodness. Yeah. Take care.